It can only be attributable to human error. Where are we going next? This is Phantom from another town. No one, Mr. Mother. That's it, man. Game over, man. Game over. I forgot how we normally start this, but hello everybody, and welcome to Cryptid, Cryptid Campfire. Campfire. Hey, you like got it this time. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. And I would like to welcome everybody to my second podcast, Campfire Cryptid. Shut up. He's <laughs> such a weirdo. That's where all of our emails are going. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, my name is Alex Daikaiju. To my left. Jasmine with. And across from us. Eli Watson, I got distracted. <laughs> well, that's good. Well, you, you you were there for the Crypto Campfire part, so you could be distracted for your name part. Yep. Uh, and today we're talking about Eli. Do you want to list off the topic today? Skinwalkers. Yeah. Is it, yeah. Okay. Is Are that you it? Sure? Is that the correct answer? I think so. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just Are... don't, I'm trying to avoid saying the word because I yeah. found throughout yeah. my research. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, well, because I've been talk, I've been vocal about it. Yeah. You guys have figured. Oh, Eli's okay. Yeah, Eli's you... house is haunted. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. There's well, a, there's a reason why you're uncontrollably coughing and dying. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, uh, this legend that we're going to be talking about today, there's not a lot known outside of the Navajo culture, uh, and this is due to the reluctance to discuss the subject with outsiders. Um, but also, uh. One of the sources I read said, try not to think about them too hard, and whatever you do, never say the name out loud. The first rule of these creatures is you don't talk about these creatures, hey. period. So Chuck Paul Canuck wrote this. We may be in trouble today, but you know what? Yeah. We did the research, so we're going there, I guess. Well, we're going to think about them half-mindedly and refer to them as skinwallers from now on. <laughs> skinwallers. <laughs> Um, but what what exactly is a skinwalker, you might be asking? You might be asking yourself. Very good question. I'm glad you asked. Uh, a skinwalker. I don't I don't know. I'm yeah. lost in the sauce with this. Why are you uh, lost? Okay, well, basically it's a, it's an American version of a werewolf. Mm. That's how it's been generalized to me before. Mm. So basically it's a shaman or a medicine man typically belonging to the Navajo peoples and they my levels are really low hello hello and they are able they have the power the ability through dark magics to transform into an animal a fox a coyote an elk something a dog a cat a Mm bear-sized cat that can fly a a cow (laughs) like the gargoyles yeah so that's a quick overview. <coughs> Let's take it piece by piece. Yeah. So first of all, the Navajo are the Native Americans that are located. Um, they're a tribe that is in New Mexico, Arizona, and Utah. That's mm-hmm. kind of... Oops, I just bumped my mic. Oh. That's kind of where they're at. Um, this legend comes from their culture, comes from stories passed down. Uh, Eli's the one with the good pronunciation. So, oh, I can't. No one can say this no one can unless say you're this. Av- Navajo. No, they don't teach their language to anyone. That yeah. makes sense. So I don't know how to say it. Yeah. So we. Um, Alex, give it a shot. Yeah. Wait. What the heck? You know what? I'm just gonna go out on a limb. Apologize in advance to any listeners out there who are of the Navajo Nation descent. I be- descent. Um, I don't know the correct number, to- correct terminology, but here we go. Ye na lo lushi. There's, a, the, there's supposed to be a D in there somewhere that I didn't hear. I, I, I abandoned the D at <laughs> the first sign of trouble. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, it's the third uh, Belushi brother. <laughs> okay. You know, now now that we're, like, actually talking about it, I feel kind of bad. Like, I like here we are, three white folk mm. sitting at a table talking about things that the Navajo don't want to talk about. Yeah. And here we are. Yeah. Um, using it for entertainment purposes, yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> But, this you know, could be a controversial one, I suppose. Uh, I mean, I guess it's you know what I'm I'm going into it being like, well, someone found out about uh, 
the Navajos legends and mm-hmm. uh, of of uh, Skinwalker, and these things seem fucking scary. <laughs> Sorry for my language, but just so you know that they're out there and be prepared. We'll throw some facts out there, so at least you know that out in the world of people who want to rape, murder, and steal everything, there's also beings that can turn into wolves and steal your soul. On that note, uh, we are... (laughs) (laughs) Okay. We we try our best... It's going to be a weird episode. We try our best here to be respectful. Um, We're simply researching for knowledge, discovery, uh, entertainment, yeah, I suppose... uh, Learning new things can be interesting, so that's why we're doing it. If you've never heard of these creatures before, uh, we're going to tell you a little bit about them today, I suppose. Or at least what has been passed down. Because none of this... none. Uh, what did I say? Um, there's, a, there's a note that I have here uh, about where the legend comes from and how it's been passed down or where the origin of it is. Um... Sorry, if you guys want to cut in, I'm looking uh, for well, a specific note. Basically, everything we're talking about is uh, an amalgamation of everything, pe- bits and pieces that people have heard, mm-hmm. and then just all kind of mixed together and to try to make some sense of it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I was fortunate enough, I found a YouTube video of a supposed Navajo person talking about these creatures, um, which I thought was pretty interesting. Yeah. Well, what what'd you learn from them? <laughs> um, quite a bit. Yeah. A lot that I didn't find on on the the regular Google. On the Googles. <clears throat> Sorry. The note I was gonna give just real quick is uh this is a quote from one of my sources that I didn't list for whatever reason. Uh, While there are many self-published books and websites that offer some insight into the world of Navajo witchcraft, much of the information is obscure and does not provide any sort of real account for how these stories and their details came into being. However, there has always been witchcraft in Navajo culture since the creation of first man and first woman. Mm. Yeah. That's the quote I was looking for. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh... All right, here we go. We're get, we're getting in it. Yeah. We're getting crazy here. Eli's got his hands up. <laughs> uh, have you seen Leprechaun say, hey? <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, the way this guy... They, um, how do I start this? Basically, you have the creation of the world. Mm-hmm. You have the first man, and you have the first woman. And what's important to note is the number four in both Apache and Navajo culture. Mm. It, it, it shows up a lot. And so this talks about the first man and the first woman and how they were taken away for four days, taken to be with the gods. Mm-hmm. And uh, no one knows what happened in those four days, but they say that it's possible that they were taught witchcraft. Mm-hmm. And when they returned what these witches and things like that uh they they wear the skins of animals and, mm-hmm. and that's what the first man and first woman used to start doing and they start having weird rituals with while wearing these skins uh their children started having incestuous relationships which is also common with witchcraft mm-hmm. to their generally frowned upon <laughs> right and so that 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 all happened when they returned from those four days. Okay. Uh, but let's see. Hold on. I have it somewhere in here. Uh, from what I can tell from what this man was describing in the video was that skinwalkers used to work with the people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and th- so there's four types of witches mm-hmm. to go with this whole number four thing. Mm-hmm. And that's what I was trying to find. Uh, I have it right here. Oh, I have it right here. Oh. Uh, they have uh, witchery, sorcery, wizardry, and frenzy. And I didn't know what frenzy was, but mm-hmm. that's basically the usage of objects to transmit curses. Okay. So I guess if you want to get Harry Potter with it, Horcruxes oh, almost. Oh, okay. Okay. So. A cursed object. I'm not sure where the skinwalker would fit in one of these four. I, cu- I couldn't really find much. Um, I, I read something that said it was the witchery. Okay. Witchery mm-hmm. way. So the witchery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, they used to work with the uh, the the Diné 
I think that's what they call them, the Diné mm-hmm. or, or the the Navajo Slash people. Navajo. And then uh, 1868 rolled around, or 1878, the Navajo Witch Purge. Mm-hmm. And I, I guess it starts before that. It, it, yeah, 1868, which was the the long walk of the Navajo when uh, the uh, I think I forget who it was. Was it? Was it? Uh, what, what was is... it Americans or was it? I think it was the Americans who who forced, like, basically deported them from their land. Yeah, was it, was that the Trail of Tears? Almost. It's a similar thing. Oh, it's, okay. Uh, not quite the tra- Trail of Tears. Not the right tribe, but it, it, it's called the Long Walk on the Navajo. Okay. And they were forced to go to uh, Fort Sumner, New Mexico, basically, because they're from the from the Four Corners region, so northeast. Yeah, northeast. Uh huh. And then they were basically across state and that, that caused a lot of people to, like die obviously on the trip and when they mm-hmm. got there none of their plants took root and uh a lot of people got sick mm-hmm. a lot of weird things started happening and they lived there for four years oh which i think is interesting yeah and then they were allowed to come back and when they came back to their land all this weird stuff continued to follow them yeah and that's when they they, they believed that their gods had deserted them they believed that their their tribe had become rampant with skinwalkers mm-hmm. and, and evildoers, so they killed. Uh, let's see. I think they killed like seventy people. Dang. Oh, forty people. Oh. Uh, forty people were killed in order to restore harmony and balance. Oh, uh, oh four. Forty. Forty. Four, yeah, yeah. Four. Oh, yeah. dang. And so, which is just crazy because. The Skinwalker's always been part of the Navajo tradition, mm-hmm. and they've never really killed anybody because of it. Yeah. But then, like, uh, a lot of this, like, cultural impact and everything, it just kind of drove them nuts. Yeah. So, <clears throat> it, it's very, very sad. Yeah. But, uh, what, yeah. I don't know if you guys want to talk about that a little bit more, because there's more to what this man had to say um, on top of that. I'll, I'm going to just throw out what I found for how... Sure someone becomes a skinwalker and then i guess i think i'm sure we could discuss it yeah yeah but apparently so in, in the navajo there's like traditional healers <laughs> um and there's two types of magic there's good and there's bad magic mm-hmm. and i guess yeah. they learn both <laughs> yes i guess they learn ber- they learn they learn both so they can handle the two types so they can better learn how to use good magic how to combat the evil magic but apparently sometimes it's just too much of a strain that they. It's my research that they go mad with the power. They get them corrupted, and they become. That's when they become skinwalkers. Mm-hmm. When you start using evil magic uh, to cause harm and pain, because the way, from what I can understand, it's opposites a lot with like Navajo culture. I guess when it comes to skinwalkers and medicine men. Yeah. Because medicine men do nothing but try to do protection, healing. And a skinwalker is a complete opposite. He's looking to com- mm-hmm. cause mayhem, pain, suffering, his own selfish needs. And I guess because they wear animal furs to turn into whatever animal. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's generally what they don't, what you don't do if you're Navajo. You don't wear animal skins. Yeah. Except for two. There's two that they do wear for ceremonial purposes. Uh, I, I, I believe, do you have the notes? Like a, yeah, a it is. A... Well, I think you're allowed to wear leather. Mm-hmm. I think it's just like fox like, pelts. Like and... a pelt. Like, uh, I guess I'm assuming maybe predator uh, pelts. It's a sheepskin and buckskin are what they wear <clears throat> for ceremonial purposes, but it's taboo to wear the pelt of any other animal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, that's why I guess that's like another like, yeah, here's a taboo that we're breaking. We're wearing animal skins so we can turn into them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's what I, I guess that's my understanding is there's, mm-hmm. there's good and there's bad and... Um, it's just like opposites attract and stuff. Yeah. So I think it's interesting because usually when we look at cryptids or these creatures, we're always like, these creatures are bad or these creatures are good. Mm-hmm. Like that's just what they are. But because skinwalkers, they start off as human. They're, they're fully human. Yeah. They're, they're medicine men that are trained in the magics and they make the conscious decision to do evil, which you're like... Oh, why would they do that? But then you look at the world and you're mm-hmm. like, that's exactly what humans do. Like, there are just evil humans. And so there are just evil witches who decide to become skinwalkers. Uh, it's interesting because uh, 
that's not what that Navajo guy said yeah? at all. Yeah, that, that's because, what I'm curious. Cause... Uh, because, like I was saying, the skinwalkers used to work with the people. That's mm-hmm. from what he was describing. And then, like, they were... Well, sorry sorry to interrupt, but you're talking... You're making it sound like the skinwalkers are a species. Like, they, well, they already it, are. You, you, you'll see. You'll see what I'm talking about. Because, uh, I don't know what their use was before this this long walk but Mm -hmm. basically this long walk event basically made them bad Uh uh-huh so like and they're a secret society that's Mm. the way he describes Mm. them interesting because uh the way you become a skinwalker is not the same way you become a medicine man Mm -hmm. which is like you know, you're describing you become a medicine man and then you go off to the dark arts. Mm -hmm. They don't describe it that way. This man didn't, he was saying that, uh, he, he's not sure how, but like basically you get drawn into it, becoming into enticed to joining this, this society. You become seduced basically by the dark side. Oh, exactly. You were supposed to bring balance to the forest, not destroy it. Yeah. Well, too bad. <laughs> well, what are you gonna do? Uh, so I don't know. Have we? Did we talk about how you actually physically become one? No. Either way, whatever the origin is, I think what we're about to say is concise through all of the oh, research yeah. on how how you actually physically become one, and that is to simply kill one of your family members, mm-hmm. right? Oh, the, if not your, all of them, right? No, your loved one. Yeah. Oh, loved one. Okay. A loved one. So basically the one, uh, I think from my understanding, it's the one you cherish the most. Okay. So, and then you, you kill that person. And according to some, you have sex with the body. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I read <laughs> I read some interesting things. Dang, you, get, you guys found the, the weird cycle yeah. of the internet again. Um, yeah. I think taken, you... Taken by skinwalkers. And then, I can't remember, do you eat the body as well? Uh, I d- I didn't read well. any- I didn't read anything about eating the body. Uh, I think you. I, I, I mean, you you've gone this far. <laughs> no no uh, time to show. Oh yeah, yeah, Restraint no. now. I do have that. It says they must kill someone dear to them, generally a close relative. In some legends, they must eat a part of the person. Mm. Yeah, and then uh, I think that's when you become skinwalker. Yeah, once mm-hmm. that's done, apparently you just like you you have the powers. Shift. It's like well, you're sacrificing it. Yeah. To to it requires a whatever. Great sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Uh, to to whatever it is they sacrifice yeah. to. Yeah. And so um, go ahead. I was just gonna say, so the animals that are usually associated with witchcraft are things like coyotes, like that's the most common. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then other things that are associated with death are bad omens. So we've got uh, owls, foxes, wolves, crows, coyotes. Um, but they can possess apparently living animals too, mm-hmm. or <coughs> people. Uh, simply by locking eyes with yeah, them. Yeah, don't look them in the eyes. Yeah. I, yeah. Apparently, if you, it, it, from what it, from what my research said, it's like, yeah, never look them in the eye because if you make direct eye contact, and then that allows their essence to like be absorbed into your body, and yeah. then they can either control you or uh, someone even said like they you become like just like a a skinwalker kind of, but like a puppet, I guess. Mm. Like they can just use your body however they want. Yeah. Um, which is pretty wild. Um, sorry, going back to the to the man because I guarantee you guys don't have this information. No, I didn't watch any video because this was wild to me because okay. he says that the the community of skinwalkers they meet they meet up at once a week, once a month. He's not really sure. <laughs> they got it on the calendar. <laughs> they have a wine I don't know. mixer and they meet up in like secluded spots like where like out in the middle of nowhere mm-hmm. like in a cave or something and he was saying that they they do this dance and they sing this song and they they lay out the pelts of certain animals on the floor uh-huh and you you stand behind it that's the what he said but like i think yeah so you stand behind it and as you're singing the song this this pelt crawls up on top of you <gasps> and you and it clothes you, and you're able to transform into oh, an animal. Oh, it's like venom. This is so. Kind of. Whoa. And so, like, Ugh. apparently, this they keep doing it because they need to like re re up. Yeah. I guess I'm so, like, I still don't really understand <coughs> the the process of this. Like, so when you're a skinwalker, you're like, can you change back into a human, or are you yeah. just disguised mm-hmm. well, as a human? What's interesting is he. 
he talked about how you can it can only appear like there's four people in the room right now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's weird too. There's four people in the room, but what's if a skinwalker came in here appearing as a coyote, it would only look like a coyote to two to three of us. Mm-hmm. And it would look like something else what? to the rest of us. Yeah. Because it can only like masquerade itself to a certain number of people at a time, which is like. What? Are, really? Yeah. That's so weird. Because I read a story uh, online about. Um, there was a woman in a village. I have it written down, but I'm not going to search through my notes right now. Essentially, woman in a village that everyone knows is a skinwalker, so they, like, avoid her. Mm. She looks human, mm-hmm. but yeah. then some kids saw her, like, float down a a cliff well, or something. You mm. you can transform yeah, to I and guess, from. I guess they can do it, yeah, kind of whenever they want. What they, what they say is that when you're in animal form... You don't look entirely animal. Mm-hmm. Like your eyes look human. Right. Or sometimes, like, you look at the feet. And yeah. Like, it's there's not stories quite. of, like, dogs with human and uh, hands right. and human feet. Or and then sometimes when their you're... mouths look weird. Right. But if you're a human, your eyes are almost like an animal's, or like, it's not quite. It's so, he described as at swap meet, he said, like, some dude had, like, dog legs. Oh, okay. And, like, he was struggling to keep his shoes on because they weren't, like, filling up the shoe all yeah. the way. Yeah. So. He's, like, hobbling all over the place. I don't know. Pretty interesting. That's weird, man. Uh, I also read that they have other powers rather than just, like, possessing Like, animals. mimicking? Oh. I, I don't know. I read uh, mind control, controlling thoughts and behavior, causing disease and illness, destroying property. Apparently they. Causing death. They stink. And oh, yeah. apparently invisibility, which I'm like... Yeah, they can disappear. Why would you want to mm. be... Like, if, I don't know. It doesn't... I'm, I mean... I don't have the mind of a skinwalker, clearly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, because it's, I mean, it's, it's like one of those things where it's like, well, you can turn into an animal if you want, but also, if you need to, you can be invisible. Cause yeah. You never know when that might be... And if you need to float down a cliff, you can do that, too. Like, <laughs> um, it's basically just being... Uh, <coughs> ha- having different uh, upgrades. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think this guy was saying that uh, darn it, you said something and it got me on, what did you say again? I don't remember. The list of powers. Uh, invisibility. invisibility. Uh, they cause, make you sick. Causing they death. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So. Mimicking. People, I guess he was saying that people, like, let's say I bought a truck. Mm. Okay. And you were jealous that I got a truck. Never, but okay. But let's just say it. Let's just say. It. All right. And you wanted, Volkswagen. you wanted for whatever reason, what I have. Okay. You would hire a skinwalker to put a hex on me, and within six months, I would lose that truck, and somehow you would gain one. Interesting. Huh. And so, like, you know, putting curses on people and stuff like that. Mm. And apparently, people out of jealousy would hire a skinwalker to to put oh, hexes on people. Oh, interesting. How, what's their pay rate? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> How do you? Pay for cable? that. You ask somebody. You ask them, yo, how, six grand or what? What's up? I don't know. With that, Life, all that money, why don't you just buy a truck? Lifetime but, supply of uh, dog kibble? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe a, game, a nice mint condition of Parcheesi. I don't know what they want. I mean, they got they got everything. They got all the powers. You might as well give them something fun. <laughs> uh, what else? What else do you guys have? Um... Oh, I guess if you're walking around, I, I, I'm assuming <coughs> not anywhere, but anywhere, uh, you've walked down the street anywhere that's like in Skinwalker territory, you know, kind of what New Mexico, so what'd you say? Northeast? Northwest? Yeah, Utah. Northeast. That, yeah. that area. I don't know geography. The Four so, Corners area. Yeah, wherever the hell that is. <laughs> uh, don't pick up jewelry on the ground. Oh. Oh, really? Yeah, because apparently that's like how they, uh, that's bait. And if you grab oh. it, you get a curse put on you. Oh, great. oh, yeah. Yeah, so if you find, like, jewelry on the ground, don't pick it up. Um, or poke with a stick first and see if the stick gets the curse. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's how Or have works. someone you don't like pick it up for you and then give it to you. Maybe. So do we want to talk about how we kill one now? Whoa, wait. Whoa, dang. I, wanna yeah, talk, I guess that's I want to talk no. about the mimic. About. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't read anything about yeah. that. So I've uh, people. I I venture on Reddit, mm-hmm. and uh, people share their stories of skinwalkers. Some of them more legit than others. Mm-hmm. Um, but 
a common trend is that they, in animal form, they don't sound entirely animal. Mm-hmm. It's, okay. It sounds like a dying animal. Yeah. Uh, or like a human imitating yeah. animal. Yeah. Okay, I did read something about that. Um, yeah. But also, they're able to mimic people's voices. Mm-hmm. So, so where if I, a skinwalker was sneaking up on me, but I thought it was Alex, yeah. I would be able to speak in Alex's voice. Yeah, hey, what's up, dude? Yeah, basically. Yeah. And I'll be like, yo, what's up? And yeah. then, you know. Uh, but uh, one story I read on Reddit, and this this still resonates with me, and I, I haven't read it in a while, so I'm going to recite it off memory. Okay. But I, I, be- I, I believe this story because it, the way they described it was pretty pretty uh pretty crazy pretty wild yeah so basically it happened to this guy's friend and he was camping out somewhere i I can't remember where but basically this guy camps by himself all the time Mm -hmm. he's like he grew up in the wilderness basically bear girls yeah he's basically that guy yeah he's basically bear (laughs) and he's out there and he's camping in his tent and it's it's like he's just set up his tent and this person in biker shorts okay. comes out of the forest and starts approaching him, but, like, walking robotically, which I hear also, like, they move kind of robotically. Mm-hmm. So, like, this person comes out moving like a robot, and uh, it doesn't say anything. It just stares at them. Mm-hmm. And he's like, it's like a secluded area. It's not like a hiker area, and this person's in biker shorts and a T-shirt. And he's just like, who are you? What do you want? And this person just opens their mouth and says, help me. Oh, and it's terrifying. like, and it just keeps saying, <coughs> help me over and over and over again until uh, this guy, he pulls out his gun because he takes a gun with him. You're out in the middle of the woods. Yeah, I would yeah. take a gun with me too. <laughs> uh, he pulls out a gun. And as soon as he points it at this person, they do a backflip for like 15 feet. Okay. And just like keep bounding backwards until they're gone. Oh. But uh, I don't know. It sort of it ties in with like this Native American thing, like from that region. And I I can't help but think of skinwalkers when I hear of that mm-hmm. because you don't really know what these powers that these you know, you can float down cliffs. Yeah, you know you don't really know what these things can do. Mm-hmm. So like why why not that? Yeah, you know why not? have a mimic of a person because I think what caught his attention was it sounded like someone he knew. Yeah. Um, yeah, they can, apparently they can sound like someone you kind of know or close to something that you, a voice yeah. that you recognize. So that's kind of how they get you. Yeah. Um, it's, it's crazy too. Uh, did you guys have anything else about skinwalkers? Um, well, let me look. I have not, I, I've, I've actually never gotten a way to kill one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I have a very important message from Reddit. Oh. From, uh, let's see. Uh, from the meme daddy 420. Oh, dang. Uh, What's up, so pops? The, the original post was that this guy has seen a skinwalker twice. What do I do? And the meme daddy 420 said, grab 17 almonds, no more, no less, crunch them into a fine powder. Next, you'll mix the almond dust with apple cider vinegar to make a paste. Rub that on your body and especially on your neck. Eggs are your friend. I repeat, eggs are your friend. Eat some every day with breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Do this with almond vinegar paste and you'll be safe. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't think that's true. <laughs> Considering <laughs> the name is Meme Daddy. Meme Daddy 420? <laughs> I mean, who knows? Like, he's out there for the people, by the people. <laughs> Spreading that knowledge. Um, yeah, I mean, I found most of the things I found were like how to like deal with one or protect yourself against one but uh, never how to essentially like find a shaman right yeah what's what you got what, what you got so um basically first what you need to know is according to legend like when a person decides that they want to be a skinwalker they essentially like they're cut off or i don't even think it's when they're a skinwalker i think it's when they become like either a medicine man or like a witch or something like you get cut off from your family like you like you're practicing magic you're you, nobody knows who you are anymore you're secluded mm. maybe it is just when you become a skinwalker cuz that wouldn't make any sense cuz a medicine man is supposed to help the people so mm. 
when you decide to become a skinwalker, you're cut off from everything. Like, you're secluded, you disappear, you change, whatever. So nobody knows where you went, people think you died, whatever. And then when you, like, reveal yourself as a skinwalker, you're not going to show your true form, you know? You're going to be disguised Mm. either as an animal or, or as a different person or something like that. So the way to kill a skinwalker is to discover its true identity, to find out who it was. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, oh. I did come to across To find this. out who it was before this transformation occurred. Uh, you have to learn its name and track it back to its home, uh, and then you essentially just yell its name. Mm-hmm. Kind of like that Jumanji movie, I yeah. guess. Yeah. The new one. Uh, you yell its name for all to hear, And once you do this, uh, the skinwalker will soon (laughs) die of disease and misfortune. Yeah. That's pretty. Yeah. You say the name. Yeah. Say the name. That's crazy. Say my name. Say my name. From Breaking Bad? Yeah. I was going to say, say his name from Glass slash Split. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. uh, Kevin Wendell Crumb. 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 Kevin Wendell Crumb. Uh, uh, out here, out. Uh, that's how you get rid of all the personalities. <laughs> Spoiler. So one of the things that I do want to note about this conversation is a lot of the times we talk about creatures or legends or stuff that there's not a lot based on fact or history. Like it's all just lore and like folk stories that people have created in different cultures to like warn children not to wander off from home or you know give you a reason to be moral and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But this, this is not that. This is not a story. This is not a myth. Mm -hmm. This is truly believed by the Navajo people. By more than, I believe in it. Well, yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But like, um, whoa, I just scrolled way, way too far down on my notes. Whoa. Um, (laughs) um, It's, it's not a myth. It's not a fabricated story uh, like other creatures we've talked about before. They're considered real, dangerous, and powerful. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I just, I think that's that's so interesting because, like, this, uh, this is a real thing that people are really afraid of. Uh, and the police department has been regularly receives calls regarding skinwalkers, and the officers has to have to investigate the situations almost weekly. Oh, damn. Um, the police officers even harbor such deep beliefs about these creatures that they perform what's called a smudging ritual before a duty each day. Mm-hmm. And I'm probably not every single police officer does this, but there's a good amount of them who do. And I had to Google what a smudging ritual was because that sounded weird. Um, but it's when. Uh, basically, it's a cleansing smoke bath that's used to purify the body, aura, energy. It's a ceremonial ritual space or any other space in personal articles. Um, and then even an actual doctor weighed in on this stuff Ooh. Uh, because she's a clinical... Uh, she? she? She. I think she is a clinical psychiatrist uh, from the western region of the Navajo reservation who wishes to remain anonymous uh but they said in an inter- in heh, they said in an interview whether or not these creatures actually exist is irrelevant to the harm they do to the psyches of the people who believe in them couple the belief in skinwalkers with the pervasiveness of witchcraft on the reservations and much harm can be done to people's mental health and communities mm. Mm. that's wild um wild yeah uh can run faster than a car yeah yes, they can run like real fast yeah 60 miles per hour down the highway yeah. chasing cars yeah like people see him run around buck naked on all fours hmm. oh you know i guess did we even talk about the the name that we tried to pronounce earlier we, we just mentioned it. Yeah. oh yeah oh, oh yeah. yeah we didn't say what it meant yeah, yeah we, what we're it all mean? over the place today um but the word translated by means of it Goes on all fours. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting because there's lots of accounts of seeing skinwalkers walking on two feet. Mm -hmm. Like, I read a story of um, some some (laughs) kids who, they heard dogs out in the field. Oh, fighting, right? Is this this the one? Possibly. I don't know. They heard, but it didn't even sound like real dogs. Oh, okay. So they went out with like a shotgun or something like that ready. And they saw these two dogs, yeah, fighting. Yeah. But they were on their back two legs. 
Mm. Yeah, but what, yeah, that's, I read that story. That one's crazy because the guy goes out there to hear the commotion. Sees two dogs fighting. They're they're up, rearing at each other on bone legs. And he's like, oh, okay. And they stop and they stare at him. Mm-hmm. And then they run off backwards on their hind legs. Yeah. Whoa. Like they they go like this, and then they go. Could that be skinwalkers though? Because around that area, there's a lot of dog person. Oh, like dogmen's? Yeah. Mm. Uh, because the the video I watched was split in half. Half of it, 20 minutes talking about skinwalkers, 20 minutes talking about dogmen. And then two hours How do you about differentiate the, the two? Uh, dogmen are dog people. Yeah. Okay. I, glad they, I, they glad we cleared that up. Yeah. Well, they don't they don't transform. Okay. They're they're born dog people. Okay. Have to, I guess right. we'll we'll cover this next yeah, week. Yeah, we're talking about those <laughs> wacky dog guys and their bathroom habits on newspaper next week. Wait, what? <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. It, it could be dog people, dog men. Could be. Uh, dog men to be inclusive. But I don't know. The the running backwards on two feet sounds. Yeah, that's walking. a weird thing. Yeah. And I, I, a lot, a few stories I read are always uh, talk about how, you know, someone being attacked by some animal. It looks kind of off. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have like human hands and human feet on a dog, or the face is like, ha- like sideways. Um, and also like going back to, you know, the robotic human movement. They say even like the animal movement will be off. Yeah. Like the legs will bend in certain ways that like a, a dog's or a wolf's legs can't. Yeah. So I mean, that the two dogs fighting, running backwards. I mean, they yeah, that could be could be. I don't know. Like well, I, dogs. Don't really move backwards, so like that's the crazy part. Yeah. Um, like, have you ever seen a dog walk backwards? Mm-hmm. It's 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 pretty difficult for them. It seems like it is oh, difficult. Think... Their butt wiggles really. <laughs> yeah, it, like it, it's not natural, like for them. Yeah. To move backwards. The little tails a wagon. Yeah. But yeah, that's the that's the skinwalkers. Did you guys get any other stuff? Mm-mm. I mean, I read a lot of stories. Of, of people who have claimed to see one or mm-hmm. think they've seen one. Uh, all of them pretty similar. You know, I saw this thing that didn't look natural mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, I, I want to throw out, because you were talking about how this is like a real thing yeah. that's feared by people. Mm-hmm. It's not just the Navajo who kind of have this tradition. Right, right, it's, right. Uh, I wrote down some of the tribes, that, mm-hmm. like the Pueblo people, or the Apache people, the Hopi people, mm-hmm. the Ute. Ute? Ute? I don't know. It's okay. U-T-E. U- I don't know how to pronounce that. But uh, they also have stories of skinwalkers. Mm-hmm. So oh, okay. Yeah, they I... all have their own, like, different variations, different beliefs. Mm-hmm. And then, um, well, I, I was looking up skinwalkers, and I fell into the rabbit hole of creepy pasta. Oh, oh no. Because... Oh, uh, are you talking about flesh gates? Yeah, oh, flesh no. gates. Because I... I because I was looking up Skinwalker, and people are like, oh, all these stories. And you hear Skinwalker, and you hear that some people are like, yeah, they can attack you, mimic voices, and they steal your skin, and they wear it. <laughs> You're like, what? That's crazy. Uh, that's a flesh gate. Yeah. And what's a flesh gate, you might ask? It's like a subterranean creature that usually is hollowed out, kind of rotten, can mimic voices, will steal your skin, uh, and is a creepypasta invention on the internet. Like Slender Nim. Yeah, like Slender Man or Momo the Bird. Oh, yeah, Momo. Yeah, oh, Momo. That's the, that's the newest one, right? Yeah, Momo's, Momo's the a new- bird? Yeah, you yeah. haven't seen its chicken legs? Yeah, it's got a lady I've fe- only seen the that face. the face, which is not even... That's some <coughs> Japanese sculpture yeah, that but, some artist but, made. Yeah, chicken legs. But yeah, it's it's a, he- a human head, and she has a torso and little chicken legs. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I'm she's... I'm pulling it up. Uh, it, what's funny, too, is Momo's from... It's a Japanese sculpture, like you mentioned. Right. It's actually from a, ha- uh, like a haunted walkthrough house in Japan, mm-hmm. to where the whole thing was you moved into an apartment. Oh, uh... uh Oh, I just saw the picture. Yeah. I don't want to see it. You don't want to see this? Look, right look at Momo. That's so gross. No, she's happy. Oh, man. I still think that face is creepy. I though. saw a video well, where someone did a face swap with Momo, oh and Momo, well, she I, was like, oh, you know, don't worry about me. I'm not worried about those photos circulating to me. I got, I'm got, i busy with my own stuff. I got my life, and it's just ridiculous. It but yeah, Momo, Momo's from a Japanese haunted like, walkthrough house. 
towards a, an apartment complex inhabited by different monsters, and you're their new roommate. Oh my gosh! And it's it's kind of like a like escape house kind of thing. That's but, so weird. But like it's it's kind of like a, a dark comedy horror Ugh. house, and so she and she's like she's the messy one. I think if I remember correctly, because I read this whole article about it, she's like the messy one, and you have to help her clean her room by picking up all these gross rotten eggs and putting. That's them in a so con- gross. <laughs> but like she's, they're all friendly. They're all just weird monsters. Um, but yeah, Momo's cool, and Slenderman uh, is a weirdo. And flesh gates are... Oh, you know what's funny, too? So, people write, write stories about this creepy positive about flesh gates. Right. But they kept calling them skinwalkers. Oh, so yeah. It was, so, it just it crossed paths to cross. where it's like sometimes you'll find info. It's like 15 terrifying facts about skinwalkers. Yeah. They'll, ski, they'll skin you alive, wear your skin, and hunt your family. Here's the link, and then it links you to like a creepy pasta yeah. where someone wrote as like an <laughs> article about during my studies of the so and so, so and also, goat men are involved too. Yeah. What? Yeah, no, because like, and I, all of the articles that I read had like pictures that we saw when we did the goat man. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's and, funny, and I found this chart, and the chart's really funny, and it's like, listen, plebes, you want to write a creepy pasta? I'm gonna lay the facts down for you. Everyone's using the term skinwalker, but they're talking about flesh gates. And don't get, don't even get me started about the misappropriation of the goat man. Yeah. Oh, no. And goat man is like first and center, and then flesh gates, and then everyone's like, oh, skinwalkers, yeah, whatever. It's Aww. a mess, And honestly. it's fake news. Everyone's trying to make you not care about skinwalkers, but they're real. <laughs> yeah, I know. Everyone, um, but yeah, uh, goat, that, goat that... men showed up for a quick yeah, second, which was funny. Yeah, I was so was confused. I was like, I'm getting my creatures mixed up. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, man. Uh, that, that's why I try to stay with as close as I could get to Navajo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I I did a lot of searching, and then yeah. I went up. Reddit is when I got hold of the whole Fleshgate. Yeah, yeah, Reddit incident. A, Reddit's a mess. Yeah. I avoid Reddit because the one time I looked on Reddit, I can't even remember what subject I was looking at. It was for the podcast, but it was just a bunch of ridiculous ridiculousness and like trolls. And I was like, "What's the point?" And I just logged off. It I'm was like, it was the subreddit taken by a moth man. <laughs> but you know the... what? Reddit's fun. Yeah, dude. I, I like going there. I mean, uh, a shout out to Meme Daddy for twenty. <laughs> yeah, Meme Daddy for his his uh, great all, stories. All in paste of and eggs, eggs are your friends, it. man. I only got a Reddit when I was in college because Robert Downey Jr. was doing an AMA, and I was like, I have to participate. Ooh, <coughs> if he does another one, we should ask him what he thinks about uh, Momo and <laughs> Flesh Gate. No, I'm, okay. I'm gonna leave that one go. Um, but yeah, nope. it's... if I ever meet him, I'm gonna ask him straight up. Yeah. We'll be like, if hey. you ever meet him, you better have me on the freaking phone on the way there. What if you met him first? Yeah. Then whatever. But I uh, have yet to meet uh, him. So I'm going to meet him. Yeah, you're going to say, RDJ, what's up? What do you think about Momo the Bird and Flesh Gates? <laughs> People want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to know. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Yeah. And I'm people. I'm the people. By the people, for the people, of the people. Um, did you guys, uh, so I was looking through Skinwalkers, and, um, I found this interesting little diversion or sidestep with the Huey Chivo. I don't know if you guys learned about that. It's, a uh, it's like a Mayan shapeshifter sorcerer. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it, I was looking up Skinwalkers and something. What is that face, Eli? I remember something. What'd you remember? It's about Skinwalkers, but I'll tell you in a minute. Yeah, um. <laughs> So th- this guy's pretty crazy. Uh, it's mostly in Mexico, uh, in the Yucatan Peninsula, which is the southeastern part of Mexico, and that separates the Caribbean Sea from the Gulf of Mexico. And they go back all the way to ancient Mayan times. Oh. Uh, and they're half man, half beast, evil sorcerers who can transform into animals uh, to eat livestock. Huh. And... Um, What's crazy about this guy is, so we talked about how you become a skinwalker mm-hmm. in Navajo culture. Uh, so to be for a, a Hawaii Chivo, I'm probably saying that horribly, and then I'll go with the name first. So the name is a mixture of Mayan and Spanish. Okay. The, uh, that the Mayan is sorcerer spirit animal familiar, and Chivo is Spanish for goat. Because he mostly shows up as a half man, half a goat, goat creature. Whoa. Yeah. Sounds and like El Chupac. 
Chupacabra. That's the thing. People are saying there's a connection between him and the Chupacabra. Oh. Uh, because goats, I found out, are not native to Mexico. They're not. They were brought over when the Spanish showed up. Oh. Yeah. So the uh, <laughs> so this is kind of recent within the past few hundred years of a goat man. Mm. But normally they're seen as like jaguars and kind of wolves, like half men creatures. But to become one, you have to do a critical spell that involves taking your head off. What? Leaving it at home. What? Killing an animal and taking its head. Oh, whoa. And that's how what? you transform. That's impossible. Not, I mean, not if you have magic. Where there's yes. a will, there's a way, man. Um, but yeah, and these guys... I'll they... do it. I don't care. And yes, so they... you do. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you do. You care. They normally attack livestock. Um, they don't really hurt people, but if you get around them, if you're around them, you'll get sick. Because they, they have uh, like a bad odor around oh. them that can make you sick. Um, but yeah, that was like a, a fun... And they, they're on like ancient mine or, uh, jars and arts, representing them as like half man, half animal beast with red scarves for some reason. And yeah, that was like a fun detour from Skinwalkers, because he talks about how other tribes have right. their versions mm-hmm. and their histories. And so down in Mexico, uh, maybe the Chupacabra is a half man, half goat sorcerer who takes his head off when he goes out Perhaps. for the night in the town. <laughs> <laughs> Eli, I want to know why you so strongly believe that these things exist. Just because... One second. Oh. Because I have something else to okay. tell you about Skinwalkers that I remembered from the man in the video. Oh. Something, this man, he's saying man. a lot something, of things. Something that didn't come up in the research that I thought was interesting was this powder. Oh. Skinwalker powder. Coarse powder. Yeah. What? They throw it at you and you die. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's fun. So apparently, the favorite place for skinwalkers to hang out are the graveyards. Okay. Because okay. they dig up graves because they're real quick about it because they got little doggy paws. Well, yeah, because they collect things for black magic yeah, yeah. Okay. So they, they collect bones sense, I guess. grind yeah. it up I, I think i think they grind it up or i don't know the yeah the procedure is but yeah they make corpse powder or uh, corpse poison yeah that's great and they then sh- they th- they're throwing your face sand bike attack <laughs> sand attack uh you know what's crazy too is um uh, uh, did you guys have any other info or anything you'd like to say no. Because we were talking about stories. There's one story that I read that was pretty interesting. It's about this girl who went to go visit her friend on the reservation, and they were hanging out. And um, I guess there was a, a stray dog running around. Mm. And um, the girl who was staying with them, her grandma who lived on the reservation, was like, yeah, don't look at the dog. Don't acknowledge it. We don't know what that dog is, you know? Yeah. And so they're sitting there. It's that night. They're watching movies. And then they hear howling and wolfing, but it doesn't sound like a normal dog. It's like a man. I, I know what story you're talking about. Yeah. Did you say wolfing? Wolfing? Did I say wolfing? Oh, woofing. Wolfing, yeah. Oh, sorry. Wolf- it was wolf. Starts wolfing around. <laughs> yeah, just wolfing around on town. <laughs> he, um... But yeah, so they hear it, and it sounds like a guy outside their window pretending to be a dog. Uh-huh. Oh. They're like, what the hell is that? And then they hear it running on the roof and stuff. Uh. And so... The the friend, my favorite part is the the person who wrote this sounds like a valley girl. So my friend, in parentheses, like totally dumb, I don't know why she did this, I would never do this, open the windows, and there's a dog like standing at the window, but like, he's, they're like, what's the dog, he's got two black holes in its neck, yeah, and it has like human hands with sharp black claws, mm-hmm. and it's just staring at him, and then the grandma comes in the room, grabs some ash from the, the chimney, Grabs her shotgun, uh, puts three bullets in there, just starts running out there screaming like, "Get the heck out of here!" Shoots off in the air, starts throwing ash in the in the air. Uh, Get out! You're not welcome here. Uh, you know, leave. Uh, and so it's quiet the rest of the night. The next day, they have a shaman come over with a uh, cedar, mm. and I guess he burn he burns the cedar. Um, yeah, the man talked about that. Maybe yeah, I guess the, the kind of cleansing. Uh, yeah. He gives everyone. Um, some something like a little, I think a coin or something to hold on to a pouch for protection. Yeah. And what's crazy too is apparently the grandma had, uh, I guess skinwalkers can also shoot bones, mm-hmm. cursed bones at people through a straw. Whoa. Uh, and I guess it shot the grandma, and so the shaman took out like a two inch piece of bone mm-hmm. from her shoulder. Yep. Yeah. Fun times. 
That was I think that was the best story I found. Yeah. Uh, for Skinwalker stories. Wow. That one was intense. Uh, so you asked me why I believe? Yeah, I just I just think it's interesting because you were the one who wanted to do this topic and you mm-hmm. were like, these, these guys are crazy. Yeah, they're like, I think they're real. Blah, blah, I do, I do think they're I real. I want to know why. I just, I... <sighs> what gets you hyped about it that? It doesn't get me hyped because <laughs> I would never want to see one or right. encounter one. Right, right. In any way, shape, or form. But I, I do believe, and I'll get into this, I guess, more next week when we talk about werewolves. Because I do I do believe in werewolves. Do you hear the dog barking right now? <gasps> yeah, I don't... There's just something about it that... Uh, Dang, he's got something to say. That's so creepy that there's a dog barking right now. We've uh, There's never been a dog barking while we're recording. Last week we had like thunder and lightning when we were talking about oh, whatever yeah, we were right. talking about. Now was that we're... last week? I feel like that was a couple weeks ago. Uh, um, it, it, it doesn't matter. Time is an illusion. It is. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It all feels the same in here. It all blurs together. It yeah. really does, and I never remember anything we yeah, talked about. So, I know. so it, what happened is his leprechaun showed up in Atlanta. <laughs> uh, it, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if you guys want to get down to the nitty gritty. Yeah. Is, uh, so my grandpa, so my grandparents are from El Salvador. Mm-hmm. So on my mother's side. And uh, my grandfather described, uh, it was his friend who had seen this, uh, he, it was this dog, a large black dog, mm-hmm. was walking, it was at night, and it was, I mean, let me set the stage for you, because El Salvador isn't like here. Mm-hmm. It's it's basically a third world country, it's not as nice as this place is, I mean, they still have active volcanoes, Um Basically, they've destroyed their wildlife population because they harvested all of their resources instead of focusing on tourism. Mm-hmm. And now they have nothing. And it's like they used to have mountain lions and leopards and all these cool animals. And now they're all gone. Anyways, this man is walking home. He sees this large black dog under the light of the street lights and as it's walking it transforms into a person Ooh. and uh that was it he saw it mm. and then it was a couple days weeks later he's at home and he's got chickens he hears his chickens going haywire and he hears footsteps on the top of his roof and growling there's this animal has figured out where he lives and mm. is now trying to attack him. So he went to go figure out how to get rid of this thing. Whoops. Oh. How to get rid of this thing. And uh, he basically had to go to a witch and get uh, bullets that were like... Silver? Not silver. Uh-huh. They were like laced with like curses and stuff oh. like that. And so uh, the next time it came back, he shot at it with these bullets yeah. and, uh, and it went away. Dang. And uh, so I believe that. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I've I've heard other stories. Uh, this one kid that I knew uh, described that his uncle was with a prostitute okay. once and uh, she transformed into a snake. Whoa. And Interesting. That, you had to pay extra for that? I don't know. <laughs> but uh, and that, that was in, uh, I think it was Uganda. Oh, okay. So, no, it was Nigeria, sorry. Woo. Woo. Whoa. Hey, yo. It's Nigeria. He was a Nigerian. Okay. Um, so, like, definitely, like, stories. And there's, like, in every culture you find some sort of ritual or practice where someone turns, is has the ability to turn into something else. Mm-hmm. And I just think, like, goat man or wolf people, mm-hmm. you know, werewolves, skinwalkers, everything... I just, I 100% believe it's true, and I don't think there's a scientific explanation for it. People are going to say it's scientifically impossible to transform into something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that, but I don't think this is a scientific phenomenon. Mm -hmm. I think this is something paranormal. I think this is something, like that ghost that I saw, the little girl that disappeared. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, that's not scientifically possible, but it's not a scientific phenomenon. It's not... Uh, I mean... I mean, it's something that we don't understand. Yeah. And it's like... That's what that's I guess that's what I'm saying is like it's something beyond normal. Mm-hmm. You know, there's something unnatural about it, and, and that's what's. 
I, I mean, I think the thing too is because everyone's always quick to say, "Oh, you know, science can disprove this." Science. Yeah. Is, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, you go back what a couple hundred years ago, and it was, if not, you know, if not more. I'm just gonna yeah. say this example: thousands of years ago, whatever. People were like, "Well, the Earth is the center of the universe, yeah, and the sun revolves around us." Mm-hmm. And they're like, "Oh, by the way, we revolve around the sun." Oh my god! Yeah. Like science is always changing what we think we know. Tomorrow is going to be thrown out the window. Yeah, I mean, heck, I mean, the other week we talked about there's a starfish that can or a jellyfish that can make its own butt appear. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Like, that's true. That that's that's crazy. Like, yeah. or there's the frogs that can hibernate. <laughs> Yeah, they can literally become yeah. frozen, yeah. and then thaw themselves out, and do like, oh, you know, that's wrong. And, and I think science is like, well, they do it. We don't know how. Yeah. So there's stuff out there. So I mean, it's yeah. just one of those things to where, you know, until we fur- further understand everything. I mean, hell, this what's in the ocean? We don't know. Yeah, we don't know. Like. <laughs> There's stuff in the sky that we don't know. I yeah. mean, hey, you know, there's a, an entire universe, solar system out there full of stuff that would blow our minds. Yeah. So, you know, until that day, it's like, oh, we don't know what it is, but we'll find out eventually. Yeah. So for the time being, it's paranormal until yeah. proven otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's, so, yeah our, that's, that's our wh- little rant. That's why I believe. Well, thank you for sharing. Yeah, heck yeah. I think that's probably the most solid, like, I believe in this thing that we've had. Yeah. Well, I do, I do. No, I'm and not And you'll get another one you. when Bigfoot comes around. Yeah. Because I believe in Bigfoot, too. Boy, we got some photos, believe you me. <laughs> <laughs> we got some red circle photos that show Bigfoots left and right. <laughs> well, I think we've oh, no. exhausted I, yeah, this topic. Yeah, I think we've topic. reached the end of this discussion. Until we talk about yeah. werewolves next week. It was a little bit all over the place today. It was. But... I, mean, I mean, it's a little all over the place because we just don't know. Because yeah. the info we have is like breadcrumbs to yeah. a bigger picture that we might never know. And, yeah. you know, that that's kind of how cultures work sometimes. Yep. Um, it doesn't help that Navajo aren't supposed to talk about it. Mm-hmm. And we're like, tell us, tell us, tell us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah so. We're like, I got to get a new creepypasta to write. Don't we all know your secrets? <laughs> uh, did we want to talk about our first ever email? Oh, yeah, from Steve Harrington. Yeah. Dude from Stranger Things. It's only been six months. I've been hawking that email every week, and we finally got something. Yes. Yeah. So shout out to you, Steve. We are taking your advice. Everything you said was true. Yeah. <laughs> we'll try to make those changes. Yeah, Steve Harrington from Netflix's Stranger Things had some things to say about us. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Shots fired. I don't know what's, I don't happening. Know what's happening either. Um, but yeah, uh, we got an email. It told us what we liked about the show, things that they think we could have improved in. So we're yep. going to take that into account. And if you have anything you'd like to say, any uh, ideas, things you want to hear from us, or just if you want to have any. Any weird things that you've had and you want to tell us, you can email us at cryptocampfirepodcast at gmail.com. Yeah, because we're doing another episode. We're sharing stories again. Yeah. Eventually. We we did a ghost episode a couple weeks ago. Um, we've got nothing but positive feedback from that episode, so we'd love to do some more kind of freeform, just tell stories around the campfire episodes. Yep. So look forward to that. Um We'll start plugging on social medias now. Uh, my name is Alex Daikaiju. You can at me on Instagram and Twitter at Alex Daikaiju. You can go ahead and follow me. Let me know if you found my social media through the the podcast. There I'll, you go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I, I basically just steal Jasmine's spiel that she does, and I always mess it up some it's way. Like, yeah, no, so I'm not judging. take it away. Uh, I'll skip the spiel this time. Just if you want to follow me, go ahead and find me on Instagram and Twitter. My name is the same on both platforms. It's at Jasmine May with. That's J-A-S-M-I-N-E-M-A-E-W-I-T-H. What about you, fella? And you can find me at EJ Workshop on Twitter, but I don't know if I'll get back to you. Yeah? I am. I have Twitter on my phone again, and I'm not really using it. Yeah. He's taking a break. I you, am you taking a break. You took a sabbatical from it. You're yeah, back, and but you feel didn't free, miss much. Feel free, because I, I, I see all the emails, and I see all the Instagram DMs. Feel free to reach me that way. Yeah. Uh, it's just Cryptid Campfire, right? Yeah, Cryptid Campfire. And then if you forgot the email, it's cryptidcampfirepodcast.gmail.com. Yeah, drop us a line. Let us know what you're thinking. 
Thank you for listening, everybody. We'll see you next week with some werewolves. Bye. Bye.